In this video, we will be putting a hip roof on our 625 square foot house. And since the building is square, it's 25 feet by 25 feet, we will not have a ridge at the top of the roof and all of the hips will meet in the center. Now let's go ahead and remove the roof. Remember, we have a two bedroom, living room, kitchen, one bath and then a couple of closets here and then our heating and air conditioning unit can go above the ceiling in this house however we will need to put the water heater somewhere maybe on the outside of the house and we will be conventionally framing this house so we're going to have two by six ceiling joist that line up with each other even though we don't have to line these up because our roof rafters aren't going to line up and I'll explain the reason why here in a little bit and we are going to have a strong back here this will be a two by four you can always make this a two by six or a two by eight and you can use building hardware if you want to to connect the ceiling joist to the strong back and sometimes the strong back will reduce the chances of your ceiling joist sagging however I hate to say I rarely came across that if the joists are undersized so make sure that you're using the correct sized ceiling joist and the strong back is located in between the two walls about in the center somewhere and then we're going to have blocks and I will need a strap every four feet to basically create a rafter tie and we will need an access hole into the attic and the size of this hole will depend upon the furnace or the forced air unit or even the size of other building components that need to get through this hole. And when I was working in the 70s and the 80s, a lot of these holes were 30 inches by 30 inches. However, now I've noticed that they are a lot smaller on some projects. You can see here we do not have any ceiling backing. Wait a minute, now we do. And the ceiling backing here can be nailed to the top plates. We're going to be using a 2x6 because of our 2x4 walls. And if you can, try to nail directly above the wall framing studs so that the plumbers and the electricians don't drill holes right where your nails are and ruin their drill bits. So if you can just kind of put your nails over the wall framing studs, that'll help a lot. And of course, a view of our backing here. We will have one inch if we're using a two by six over a two by four wall on each side. And that should provide enough room for you to attach your drywall to the ceiling backing. Now let's go ahead and zoom in over where the wash machine is going to be located. If you notice, I don't have a block here. I have a block here and the block here is basically to stabilize the end of the wall framing here. If I don't have this block then this wall can kind of move wherever until it's drywalled and then after that it might not be plumb. So make sure that you stabilize anything when you run into a situation like this. Here we're going to be able to nail the backing next to the ceiling joist to prevent the upper part of the wall from moving in either direction. And let's go ahead and take a look at the lower view here and then swing over to the other side. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the post. We are going to put a post in the center here, right underneath the hips. And just a few minutes ago, somebody emailed me a question. They were wondering how you can support a pyramid roof to prevent it from pushing the walls out. And this post just might help with that problem. And in this example, we're going to have the four hips connecting into each other. And next up, let's go ahead and add our fill rafters or our jack rafters. And I'm not going to be coming off of the center here with a roof rafter. And the reason for that would be to reduce the amount of waste for the roof sheathing, even though I'm not 100% sure I actually accomplished that in this video. Well, let's go ahead and head down to the lower section. We're going to have square cut fascia board, and we're basically only going to have a couple of flyers at the end there, along with our drywall backing blocks. We're going to use blocks here in between the roof rafters to nail the corner of the drywall too. Take a look at it from the bottom. And this is a common method. I've been doing it for years. And of course, the layout for the roof rafters. You can see here where I have all of the jack rafters lining up with the opposing rafter. However, I'm not going to be able to connect the rafter on one side to the rafter on the other side for my rafter tie if I use this layout here. 
So just keep in mind that this right here might not work for your project and is simply going to provide you with another thing to consider or a good argument for not using a rafter in the center all the way around the perimeter and then pulling off of that rafter in each direction with your on center layout. Now keep in mind we might not have this problem if we had an evenly spaced measurement. 25 feet does not divide into two foot increments as well as 24 or 26 feet would. And next up let's go ahead and install our fascia board. And then I want to kind of zoom in on the block here. I'm going to be using a block. I had to reduce the height of this ceiling joist to a 2x4 to go underneath the hips. And that shouldn't be a problem if you can use a block like I'm using here to increase the strength of the ceiling joist that's now overspanned. So we're just simply going to end nail the ceiling joist into the block and then end nail the block into the rafter. Another trick for your carpenter toolbox. Take a look at the corner, how it's going to work out to attach our drywall to. And take a look at the fascia board. And of course, even though we reduce the height of the ceiling joist, we're still going to have to notch a little bit of it around the bottom of the hip to make it work. And next up, let's take a look at the fascia board corner here. And then from the other side here. And let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing to provide you with a view from the bottom here. Oh, up, you can see the edge of the sheathing where it beats the fascia board is going to be nice and square. Unlike if we use plum cut fascia board. And again, like I said, I don't really think this worked out like I thought it was going to. And we could always redo the layout for the roof sheathing. We could start a little further over to the right or a little further over to the left to make it work a little better. Now I am going to include the first video that I made in this series. So make sure that you watch that if you're interested in learning more about the floor plan layout. Next up, let's take a look at the floor plan for our 625 square foot house where we have two bedrooms, one bedroom here, one bedroom here, closet, closet, bathroom. And then we have the front entry door here, rear entry door here, window in the kitchen, small kitchen and room to where you can put a small table here, refrigerator, washer and dryer, living room. And of course it is 625 square feet, 25 feet wide, 25 feet wide the other way. And next up, let's zoom in on some measurements here to give you an idea what we're dealing with. And I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll up here. And the whole reason for this is just to be able to provide you with some measurements in case you're planning on building a project like this. And I do not have any plans available to the public for this and probably won't in the future. However, that doesn't mean that you can't check out the playlist for our 625 square foot house if you're interested in learning more about different roof designs and other things that might benefit you in the construction of something like this. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.